Omega level. Omega level. Omega level. Omega level. So Josh is still not here. I'm getting kind of worried about my buddy. Haven't heard from him all week. What's going on? Uh, he's still stuck in the mirror dimension. He's okay. That's what? He took a sling ring. No, he can't escape. <laughs> You're a fat little idiot. On uh, There will be analysis. We have already done Josh's favorite movie, which was Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. We've Trash. done my favorite movie, which was The Fountain, which is even worse. Yes, even and now we're doing Steven's favorite movie, which... We are scraping the bottom <laughs> of the trash can. Which right is now. freaking Requiem for a Dream. It's like Josh's favorite movie at least has some minor uplifting things about it. My favorite movie is The Fountain, which is, I think, the most depressing like movie that's not a documentary that I've ever seen in my entire life. And yours is Requiem, which is one of the most depressing movies of all time, like easily. The most one of the most realistic and brutal depictions of drug usage ever. And in honor of uh, Josh being absent. This movie still has like a connection with apes somehow. Yeah, if he was here, he would point that out. That there's still a minor connection with apes in this movie. Every time she's opening her little like PO box, checking for her like uh, her TV invitation, mm-hmm. uh, she makes this little monkey noise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Only he only he found that out. Yeah. <laughs> only he noticed, he, he that. noticed that. <laughs> I'm sure Jeff noticed it too, but Yes, thank you, viewer. Requiem for a dream, man. Like I was saying, that's this movie is absolutely brutal. Like if you've never seen it, you need to watch it. You're welcome and I'm sorry. Because it's not I'm not sorry. It's it's definitely not an easy watch. I've seen this movie a bunch of times. Like I've I've seen it multiple times. And watching it again still is like, God, dude, it still hits me just as hard as the first time that I watched it. Like it's a very difficult movie to watch. It is not an easy, easy thing. Yeah, what? I kind of felt bad asking to watch this with my girlfriend. <laughs> and she had never seen it before, had she? No, and then she got mad at me because that character is also called Marion. Yeah, his girlfriend's name is Marion, so she's made Marion. Mm-hmm. She's friends. She with, loved that. She's friends with Big Tim. <laughs> <laughs> so, Requiem for a Dream starts off, like, the entire premise of the movie is it's about addiction, Ma. right? <laughs> Ma. Why are you doing this to me, Ma? It's about addiction. It's about Jared Leto's character, Harry Goldfarb, and uh, his girlfriend, Marion, and their friend, um, Tyrone. Tyrone. Are Tyrone th- Love. Yeah, Tyrone Love are three heroin addicts, and they're always looking to try to get like the means to get their next fix. Good people. And yeah, and one of the ways that, that Harry does that all the time is that he steals his mom's TV. He borrows. And he borrows it. He goes and sells it, and she has to go buy it back later. <laughs> yep, and uh, he got mad at her just because she decided to chain it to the radiator. Yeah, and he's like, what are you doing to me, Mike? You made me break something here. She's like, what's with the locks? And she goes, this is for the robbers. <laughs> yep, I like how the first shot opens up with like her running to her room to lock herself away from him. Mm-hmm. I guess because she's like partially afraid of him at this point. Well, yeah, he's a junkie. Yes. But not that she will ever really admit that. Right, yeah, because it's, it's her only son. As she goes into the room, it just has, it just divides the shot in between both of them just separated from each other. Yeah, that's really cool. Mm-hmm. Dude, I cannot believe this movie is Darren Aronofsky's second movie. His first full-funded movie, too. Like, his first studio production. It is pretty amateur, so. <laughs> Dude, the, the, all of the tech aspects of this movie are fantastic. The film, sound, editing are amazing. Cinematography is incredible. Score is incredible. Direction is incredible. This came out in 2000. In 2000. So, like, a lot of these shots you'll see, you'll probably be like, oh, they use steady cam a lot. But I think this is also one of the first movies that truly used it as much as it did. Right, and yeah. as effectively. I think, yeah. like, the, if we were going to talk about, like, the first instance of steady cam, I think that was, like, Rocky. Fair amount of use of the steady cam, which I liked. I think they yeah. use it pretty well. They even use it within like the first three minutes, just a little montage of them transferring the TV to the pier where they can go <laughs> on it. Yeah. They actually attach it to the TV for a moment. That's a really cool shot. I like that. Yeah, just a nice little journey. Uh, <laughs> nice little journey of the TV getting sold. <laughs> trying, to get, trying to get some smack. <laughs> <laughs> trying, to get to, uh, trying to get the boss gag. Mm-hmm. But uh, I think what this movie... What I find mostly to be remarkable about it is like the soundtrack and how it just the score, yeah, the score. Mm-hmm. It carries the movie for the most part, oh, along it does, with dude. its editing. But it's um, so iconic. The score is. Oh yeah, I think about like the main like theme the, of it. The like, sonata. Really often, yeah. I think my favorite part of it is at the very ending, like during the whole winter. Uh, yeah, winters. Did they get to winter? Yeah, winters winter. are a terrible time of year, apparently. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's terrible in this movie. The Ugh. maniacal, like, circus soundtrack is mm-hmm. like their lives are just completely spiraling towards the end. Yep, and just completely really out of control. And they pick up the pace with the editing. Is mm-hmm. this st- does this still have, like, the most cuts in any movie? I don't think it does anymore, but I know it held that record for a long time. I'm not positive. I know for a long time it had the record of the most cuts in a film. Yeah, which, re-watching it again, I thought it was a lot more faster paced, but, like... They're really, they only really crank it up during the last act. Yeah, as as it goes on, the cuts get more and more and more there frantic. There are always like quick cuts with like with whenever they drug do usage. Drugs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like you see the eyes dilate, you see like the the chemicals being introduced, you see them like cooking it or whatever. Mm-hmm. I just kind of thought about this with uh, Sarah Goldfarm, like Goldfarb. I thought I said Goldfarb. Oh, I think you said Goldfarm. 
Cold Farm. <laughs> um, I mean, it's not like she remembers who she is anyway. Yeah, anymore. no, it's fine. <laughs> she doesn't know. <laughs> but I guess like her addiction before the pills was kind of TV, and they kind of do the quick cuts with her picking yeah, up the remote every do. time too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's her current addiction. I'm a genius. I just <laughs> thought of that. <laughs> Harry even says too, like at one point when he wants to do yeah, something she is a good for yeah. good for his mom, he's like, I was trying to think, what's her fix? You know, what is hers? It's the TV. She loves television. You know. Yeah, so she already has, like, a, a bit of an addictive personality going on, too, and that's why it's, it's so easy. That's how it's so easy for her to, like, fall into the, the trap of all the diet pills that she gets on, which are essentially just speed. There's uppers. Mm-hmm. So Sarah gets hooked on diet pills because she gets a call from a random place telling her that she's been selected to be a contestant on a TV show, right? So she wants to fit into her this. Her favorite TV show. Her favorite TV show. Rata Rata Juice. <laughs> juice for Sarah. Juice for Sarah. And so she wants to fit into this red dress that she uh, used to wear when she was younger, and she's overweight now, like, or she weighs too much to uh, fit into it, so she needs to try to lose weight. She wants to lose 50 pounds. It's not like it's a small little thing. It's 50 pounds is a lot of weight to lose, you know? So she goes on these diet pills, and this is, Booby is based, like, um, it's, it's either the very early 90s, or it's like the 70s or the 80s, you know what I mean? It's like it's I thought still, it was like mid-80s. It's still got the bubble screen TVs, no one has cell phones, you know what I mean? Like, it's all, like, it's, it's pretty old school. Diet pills and stuff were like, I was assuming still kind of new back then, they didn't know fully what they did to people and what the, like, lasting they effects were. They might have, I just don't think that uh, yeah. doctor cared at all. No, yeah, her doctor definitely did not care. When she comes in uh, the second time to see him, she's all spaced out and freaking out, he didn't even look at her one time. No, he didn't. <laughs> she's like, you doing all right? She's like, well, everything's all right, but I'm not. Mm-hmm. I'm not that's, okay. That's clearly normal. Fill the salacy next week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she's like even like has a gasp where she just turns toward the wall because she yeah. hears like the, the fridge out. again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <gasps> dude, the fridge's performance is un- incredible, dude. Terrifying. I don't know how he didn't get nominated. Yeah, seriously. How did I get Best Supporting Actor? That fridge was incredible. <laughs> God, her performance is just excellent. Ellen Burstyn. Dude, Ellen Burstyn God, kills like, it. She got nominated for an Oscar for this. Progressively just gets better and better throughout the movie. Yeah, as she, as she gets crazier, she, her performance gets so much better. Like, she handled that so well. I think all four of the main cast were fantastic oh, yeah. in this movie. Amazing. For she, me, it's Ellen Burstyn, Jennifer Connelly, Jared Leto, and then... Um, Marlon, Mar- Mar- Marlon Wayans? Marlon Wayne. Yeah, yeah, Marlon Wayne. For me, it's, it's Connelly... And then probably Little and Burstyn, like, a, a solid tie for me. And then Marlon. But I think all four of them were, like, awards-worthy. I think it's really funny that Connolly did this movie. Then the very next year, she did A Beautiful Mind and won an Oscar for it. It's almost, to me, like, she's great in that movie. But it also seems halfway like a makeup Oscar. Like, oh, we didn't nominate you for Requiem, and we should have. It still does amazing. top her performance in Labyrinth, though. <laughs> also, along with her performance getting better, like, uh, you can also see the similar symbolism of the dress just no longer fitting her by the end of it like she's right, already yeah. lost probably more than 50 pounds oh yeah for sure and... yeah it starts off but she can't even fit into it and then as it gets towards the end of the film she's wearing it but it's like it's hanging off of her it's also just stained as yeah she's just like i thought that was an awesome shot just her like not even like slow-mo it's like her normal speed wandering through the streets as she just has her like ultimate meltdown and everyone's mm-hmm. just rushing past her yeah and how, like how dismissive everybody is of her on the on the train yeah just no one cares you're like you're whack. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this person's crazy. Let's just stay away from him. But yeah, as it uh, as it the movie moves on and she like falls deeper and deeper and deeper into the trap, right? And and she's no longer fitting in the dress now. She's having hallucinations and she's imagining herself on the show. And on the show, she fits into the dress perfectly. And the dress even looks kind of different on the show too. It looks like a much better dress than what she's wearing. And she's all done with makeup, you know, and what she perceives is like looking perfect for the show. But when she's sitting on the couch, like in her chair watching it, she's like sunken into it, you know, like it's hanging off of her. She's lost so much weight. Yes, in my opinion, she has the most tragic story out of everybody in there. See, and also, like, to wrap up her arc is when she's finally, like, locked in the mental hospital. She's mm-hmm. one of the only few besides Jennifer Connelly that's also smiling at the end of this movie. But she's also crazy. She, yes, she is crazy, but she also has, like, her final hallucination of her on the show again, and she's actually embracing Harry, and Harry's embracing her. Yeah. And she's, and like, to contrast the mm-hmm. opening shot of where they're, like, just... Split at odds parts. and split, yeah. yeah. And Harry is all—he's uh, all clean cut and looks like a nice businessman too. It's like what she imagines that she wants his life to be, you know. It all happens because she couldn't follow through with that third rule. I think the show spoke about, which they never directly yeah, they, say. They never tell you what it is, but on in in one of the background shots when he's talking about the third rule, it says like three and it's circled a bunch of times. Drive you crazy, and it says commitment underneath it. Yeah, I love that. This one and this one will drive you crazy. And oh. It says the number three circled a bunch of times. It says commitment. So I've always taken the third rule to be commitment. Like you have to commit to this plan. All because she didn't want to cut out sugars. Yeah, she couldn't cut out I the like, sugar. Also, like her like 
I guess the only real attempt you see at her actually doing the diet is just her looking at like the little wedge of orange and stuff. And you just see it like disappearing. Yeah, yeah, that was yeah. also cool. I like those shots a lot. But you said that you thought that she had the most tragic story. For me, I think Harry has the most tragic story. But like she, when she's talking to Harry, though, she just admits like she's doing this oh, because dude. she has nothing going for her. That she's seems just rough. alone. Her husband's get, been gone. Harry's, Harry's a not junkie around. That only yeah. shows up when he needs the TV, ma. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. It's, oh and man. He even says like, "You've got your friends out there." She's like, "It's not the same." Like, yeah, the only reason they even care about her is because she's going on TV. So she's like, gonna finally. Like, did you somebody. see where I was? I was in the best seat. It's like right in the middle. Like I'm finally a somebody now. You know, like this means something to me. It's, it's it's sad, man. It was so depressing. I felt like him when he's in the taxi on his way back. Just yeah, just crying, crying his eyes out. and just looking for a shot of heroin to make it go away. Yeah, <laughs> story of my life. <laughs> but yeah, I think Harry has the most tragic story because he when, brings it on himself, though. Right when this starts, uh, Sarah's yeah, and he brings it on everybody Jennifer else. Connelly, yeah, and, Mar- and possibly Tyrone and possibly Tyrone too. Yeah. So when this starts, um, Sarah is not an addict. It seems clear to me that Marion and Tyrone have not been doing it nearly as long as Harry has. He's been heroin addict for a lot longer, right? Tyrone seems like his well, his story, like he keeps having flashbacks of the thinking about his mom. Mm-hmm. So I've always got the impression that his mom has recently passed away. It's been like no more than a few years. And he's still like, it's still weighing on him really heavily. And he, he can't like move past it. And that's what turned him to heroin, right? And then Marion, I don't think ever did it before she met Harry. She already had a therapist. So she's already clearly had some yeah, sort she, of issues. She already before. has something going on. And she was sleeping with a therapist too. At least, yes, at least once or twice before yeah, she was with Harry, at least. Yeah, at least one or two before times. Before he encourages her to do it again. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, it's so awful to get money for the next fix. Yes, but, yeah. but that's going to take him out of there. She won't have to do it again. Yeah, you won't just one time, right? So, yeah, like uh, everyone by association of Harry becomes addicts, other than like the mom. It's, it's not really Harry's fault he that she does. Do that. But Tyrone, it's not clear. It's never mentioned if Tyrone ever did it before he met Harry. Well, I mean, and it yeah. also, it seems like Harry and Tyrone have been friends for a while, too. So Harry may have already been doing this, and Tyrone never did until his mom passed away, and then he turned to it and started doing it with Harry. If Harry had been with his mom more often, though, if he had actually paid attention been a good to son. her and actually visited her, maybe she wouldn't have ever actually yeah, felt so the need to go on the show. You still could kind of attribute part of that to Harry for just being a piece of crap son, because yes, he's, he's a junkie. Yes, for not supporting his mom like he should. Yeah, exactly. So, like, yeah, everything ties to Harry, and for me, it's that's so... Like heartbreaking and sad because Harry himself, at his core, seems like he is a good person. Yeah, because he, he wants to help good out things. Mary and he, he wants wanted to help to his help mom. He wants to buy her that TV and do something nice for her. TV. Yeah, yeah. He wants to do something nice for her and make like her he life just took be better. Her, like five pills to turn it on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he wants Ma- to help Marion out. She's a um, she does fashion design, mm-hmm. and like she, it seems like she just kind of does it as a hobby. Like maybe she went to school for it before, but she like dropped out. And he wants to help her open up like her own fashion store. You know, like have her own shop to sell her own designs and stuff at. He wants to help people he wants to make all this money so that him and tyrone have to struggle getting by anymore like doing menial jobs and stuff like that he wants to help his friend out like he seems like almost like his heart is in the right place but he's doing the absolute worst things to try to get it done because he can't get over his addictions he can't get past it it literally controls and ruins his life and it's like man like that is heartbreaking to me because the guy seems like he could be and is a good person he just can't get past his demons like it's, it's awful, dude. And I think he gets the, well, I think Sarah absolutely gets the worst end of the stick. Like, hers is the worst ending because she's in electroshock therapy. But at least going crazy. she had somebody visiting her. But yeah, and her friends visit her. But man, Harry gets his freaking arm lopped off. He's going to go back to prison when he gets out of the hospital. I mean, he knows that his relationship with Marion is over. He's going to be in prison for life probably now. Like, it's, oh, he might, it's awful. He might be persuading me. It's awful, because, dude. Harry's terrible. Yes, before he does lose his army, he has that final call with Marion. That's right the most heartbreaking scene in the movie for me. Big Tim slash Little John. Yeah, <laughs> I'm Little John. Yeah, dude, that conversation, I love that conversation from like the dichotomy of it, right? So each of them are lying to each other, and they know they're lying to each other. They're saying what the other person wants to hear and what they want to be true. But it seems like she just takes it so much better than he does. It's, it seems like she has already completely accepted it. See, and honestly, even thinking about it right now, like she may be completely accepting of knowing this is over, and he may not. He still foolishly may believe that what he's saying to her could be true. Like, I will see her again. But then when he's in the hospital and gets his arm cut off, the woman is like, uh, he says, like, Mary, and he's like, oh, who is that? And he's like, she'll, she'll come. And he's like, no, she won't. She won't, because now he knows, like, it's, it's, it's over, right? It's like, man, that's, that scene is that's awful when they have that phone conversation, because they're both telling each other, like, she says, can you come? Come home now, like, come can here today. come today. And he's like, yeah, I'm come. I'm on the way. I'm, I'll come he today. He breaks down when yeah. he says that. Because he knows it's impossible. It's impossible. He uses his one phone call to call her just to talk to her and hear her voice. 
It's not Awful. like Tyrone has a very good ending. It's not like we're really talking about him too much, but he's just stuck in the South dude. in a very racist jail. Oh, man, jail yeah. Tyrone prison. is stuck in jail in a racist jail, dude. Yeah, it's... Uh, I like the scene like when he's just waiting on Harry. At the hospital? I still think that... like, How can he get arrested? Like, what did he do? It, exactly. They don't make it clear like what he did. They, ob- they don't have anything on them. They're on the way to try to pick up yeah, exactly. heroin. They don't have anything... Yeah, yeah, it's clearly just, that his arm is messed up, mm-hmm. and yeah, he's used it, but you, I don't think you can and, arrest someone for just previously using something. Well, like actually, that. they may have had some on them because they do show up in the car. You're right; so, they did shoot. So up they in probably the car. they probably did have Why heroin the on hell them. How did they carry it into the hospital, dude? <laughs> they're not that bright. They were driving from New York to Florida to try to get get in yeah, on a it's fix. All because they saw Florida on the side of the semi truck that was driving away. Yeah, it doesn't. Even, they don't even know if it's for sure going there. From what I remember. Now they'll never find out. <laughs> yeah, right? So, yeah, they probably did have heroin on them. So, he, he, if he didn't have it on him, they may have, like, forced him to let him search their car. You know, like, it's not clear. But they definitely had heroin because they shot up in the car. And that's what made him want to take him. Right into his wound again. Yeah, it really God, dude. makes me so hard dude, Yeah, the, oh, it looks so awful, too. Yeah. Oh, it's bad. It's doesn't bad. look good. <laughs> so, yeah, can his... Can you hear me? Can you see me? Okay, to work. Yeah, can you hear me? Can you see me? Okay, to work. <laughs> He was like, oh, yeah, take him to the hospital. He's not going to last another week. He said, that's yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then, yeah, then the one person they have to, like, correct and say something to is the black guy. they got to be racist to him. So, yeah, his ending for his story is awful, too, because now he's in prison for freaking drug. Like, probably, they probably got him for smuggling because they're not in New York anymore, so they're on the way down to Florida, so they're crossing state lines with drugs on yeah, them. Yeah, 600 miles. <laughs> yeah, 600 miles, and they're crossing state lines with drugs. So they probably popped him for drug smuggling and for paraphernalia and for possession. Like, he got a lot. You know what I mean? So, yeah, he, his story ends with him being in freaking prison now. And in, a prison. in a racist prison where no one likes him, obviously. And they're all being, withdrawals. all being racist with, to him, and he's going through withdrawals. Like, man, his ending of his story is awful. They, they were literally shouting for help at one point. Like, yeah. someone save us. We are dying. He's like, my friend is dying here. I need help. It's awful. And the ending of Marion's story is awful, too, man, because she succumbs to, like... Addiction? Addiction in a way that she obviously never wanted to do, where she becomes a prostitute. She just literally starts prostituting her herself tricks. from her next fix, right? Going butt to butt. Yeah. When she shows up to, to Big Tim's the first time and uh, she goes down on him and she gets like the the heroin and she goes to leave. He's like, we're having a party this Sunday. She She's goes, like, I'm, I'm not really I'm, I'm not. I'm not really. I'm not going to do that. And he goes, I'll see you Sunday. He's like, oh, uh, he knows. Yeah. Also, like that first phone call. To him. <laughs> yeah. First phone call to Big she, Tim. She calls him. He's like, hello. She second guesses herself, just hangs up without saying anything. She mm-hmm. calls back like. Five seconds later, and he goes, hello? She goes, hello? And then he just <laughs> <laughs> he just laughs. The greatest character introduction of all time is just laughing on the phone. <laughs> what a creep. Dude, yeah. Oh, man. And then so, yeah, the ending of her arc is now she's like, she is full into the addiction she now. a big old bag of smack. If she wasn't completely reeled in, she is completely reeled in now because she got a lot of heroin for what she did, which is going to bring her coming back. It's going to put her in the mind state of, oh, I just have to do it this one, like this one day, this one couple hour span, go there and I get all this, these drugs for like the next several days or the next week. You Meanwhile, know what I mean? she's surrounded by the remnants of all of her like old well, dreams. Like, exactly. She tore out all the pages of the like, designs her, that yeah, she was doing. Old designs mm-hmm. and they're just thrown up all over the room as she... Well, as everyone in this shot like turns into the fetal position, as they're, I, like, lo- I love that back too. To their, their most basic instincts, mm-hmm. yeah, their most basic state, reverting back to everyone like goes to the fetal position, and her fetal position is holding her heroin mm-hmm. against her chest, happy because mm-hmm. she has her next fix. Man, it's awful, and she, her character, too, Marion, is the worst character in the story too. Oh, she, because she is the one bad that, person. She's in the most. She's in the most denial. Yes, I love her shot when like they're both you in can bed. Already see, yeah, they're both in bed. You can already see that Harry's like. Probably withdrawing because when he, she finally wakes him up as she's just tossing and turning, just doing flips all over this bed. And she's the only she one moving. Harry's up. just sleeping. He's already still drenched in sweat. So mm-hmm. that's just like you said. that It shows that he's been through this many, yes. many times. And he knows, too. Like, she wants to push off is he's what they call it. He's able to make it to the next morning because exactly. he knows that he, he knows. has at least a fix for the next mm-hmm. day. But she has to like she has to use it right then and there yeah. just to be able to, like, just to sleep. And that also tells me, too, that she's a lot new right than him. Yeah. Because exactly. she can't handle it. And he is so used to going through dry spells where he has to like monitor himself and like divvy it up for like, I can do a little bit here and then a little bit here. So he knows when I wake up in the morning, I can get high. Yes. I just got to make it through the night, but she can't make it. Also has one of the most saddest. I love you. I've ever heard in any movie ever because she's just, she's like, Tyrone's going to score in the morning. You know, he's going to, it'll be fine. Go ahead and do it. Yes. Like we'll get more tomorrow. It'll be okay. Fine. I don't want to see you suffer. We can do it. She's like, I love you, Harry. Yeah. She only says it once she gets her way. And Mm -hmm. then the next day, once that like, 
They go to like the supermarket. Yeah, and then like, well, no, it. Uh, yeah, Tyrone just that. doesn't score. Tyrone's just oh, yeah, not able to score. Yeah, shooting? I think it's yeah. the shooting, and uh, Tyrone's not able to score. And then she's like, "This is your fault. You just had you were hot and heavy. You hot and heavy to get high last night." What the hell are you talking about? This was you. He obviously has a short fuse because he just immediately calls Tyrone. He's like, "Yeah, can you give me the number of that guy that doesn't take money? He only likes broads." And then he writes it on the back of a picture of the two of them and gives it to her. That's another super heartbreaking scene in that movie for me is when she looks at the picture. Of the two of them, Harry and Tyrone go to Florida because they're trying to get like more drugs. She's just in her in her uh, apartment, and you see her look at the picture of her and Harry, and for a split second, you think that maybe she's like missing Harry, and then she just flips it over to get the number to call the guy. It's like, oh, that's awful, dude. Yeah, awful. I also like the shot when I think they shoot up. This is before any of this, and you can actually see them caressing each other. And oh, like, and they're like, kind of happy. Dual shot where like you have him in the left screen, her on the right mm-hmm. screen. And Occasionally, just changes to see their fingers like just caressing each other and that's a really just cool holding scene. and loving each other. But I think that's also just symbolism that heroin's already coming between them. Exactly, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. And I like yeah because before that, I'm pretty sure it's before that you get the scene of the two of them laying in her apartment around all of her drawings, mm-hmm. and the camera's doing that like 360 from the top down view, mm-hmm. and they're like they're all high as hell laying there, but they tell each other that they love each other and they're actually happy in this moment. Mm-hmm. And you know, they also have their little crime date. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's like, right to their crime date. Building or something. <laughs> yeah, just to go to the roof. And like, look at the city. He's like, who's there? He's like, huh? He's like, <laughs> yeah, look, he hits all the buttons. <laughs> it always cracks me up. I was like, how does this work? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sure it does work. At least it used to with stuff like that. Also, did you know the shot when Jennifer Connelly is in the bathtub and she's like uh, knelt over, like submerged under the water naked? That that shot is taken from a manga, and Darren Aronofsky bought the rights to adapt it to film just to use that one shot for this movie. I did not know that. <laughs> Bought the rights to adapt a book just to use one shot that was in it. I wonder how much he spent on that. I, I mean, I, I don't think the manga was extremely it's popular. Probably, it's probably, probably not a whole the, lot. It's probably most of the budget. <laughs> that was 90% of the budget was just this one shot, just acquiring the means to be able to, like, <laughs> to be allowed to do it. And there is, like, a limited <laughs> amount of special effects. Like, it really only comes there to really play, isn't like, any. when she has... The fridge. Yeah, when Sarah has her major meltdown. It takes a mix of all of her narcotics yeah. because she's no longer, like... Yeah, she makes a call earlier on. She's like, it's yeah. no longer giving me the same It's not effect. working. She's like, well, that's completely natural, Mrs. Goldfarb. You just got to wait. And You're just getting a tolerance. Yeah. You're getting used to it. You're supposed to. She started, what, she took like three or four to start like... The first time the she takes amount? two, and then she starts taking like three, and then she starts mixing, like, because mm-hmm. there's one for like that morning. That unintentional. Yeah, there's like at that point, there's strong four different ones. Yeah, yeah, and she just has them everywhere, and she's just grabbing them, popping them. She's like, I can hear your teeth rattling. She said, that goes away at night when I take the blue one. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, are you on uppers, Ma? <laughs> I love that scene too. She said, "How come you know much more than a pharmacist?" She said, "Just trust me." Like, I know. <laughs> okay, and then he tells that he's a distributor. When she asks what his job is, <laughs> he's like, "I'm a distributor, distributor. <laughs> like for like a company." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because he's selling drugs. Also, I love their product placement. It's like I got you a new TV mods from Macy's. <laughs> <laughs> Macy's. <laughs> I cannot believe that they like. A product placement in a movie like this. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> say Macy's. <laughs> Requiem for a Dream, sponsored by Macy's. And heroin. <laughs> so yeah, getting back to real quick the steady cam stuff. I love the different instances they use it. Right. So after Tyrone's in the car and everyone gets shot, and it's just him running down the street with blood splattered all over him. And then Marion, after she goes and sleeps with her therapist, and it steady cams her out of the his apartment down to the hallway. That's a long shot. Yeah, it's a long shot. And then outside to throw up because she's sick about what she just did. Mm-hmm. Oh man, it's awful. Which Harry talked her into. Yeah, Harry, that the worst thing Harry does in the movie. Which also just like. Yeah, obviously shows that they did sleep together before because like you never had a problem with the lights being on before. Yeah, she wants to turn the lights off, and I'm assuming she wants the lights off that so he can't see her track marks mm-hmm. because uh, she wasn't a heroin addict before she met Harry. And not to have to look at his uh, that glare off the top of his head. <laughs> that was bald head. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I love too the um, the two different instances it has in the movie of people imagining what they want to do and not happening. Yeah, what the first time where Harry takes the cop's gun and they play keep away with it. Like, this movie took a crazy <laughs> yeah, turn. The first time that I watched, I was like, these guys are going to jail and getting murdered. <laughs> this is insane. And it's like, oh, it's just Harry's head. And then in Marion, when she you first see the therapist and she has uh, dinner with him, she Wait, stabs his hand with a fork. She's like, you're a pig. Yeah, he was a pig. He's, he was a pig. That was a pretty. She even brings up like his wife. Part. Tries to ask him about his wife, and he acts all like you know he's disgusted that she has the gall to ask about his wife. That dude eats like a slob. Yeah, he does. Dude. He was just a piece of crap, man. <laughs> Awful person. And the only reason she even like dealt with him was because he knew her parents, and she didn't want him to like rat on her. Oh yeah. He dude. was lying to her parents and telling her parents that he, she was still going to sessions and she wasn't doing it anymore. She didn't need to. She had heroin to fix it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, her sessions now were Harry and uh, Needle. <laughs> So yeah, overall, 
this is a fantastic movie. I think it's a seminal landmark film. In my opinion, it needs to be shown to like high schoolers, entry level in ninth grade. You need to watch this movie to know about the dangers of drugs and heroin usage. Like it's this movie is completely awful. I could possibly but it's see fantastic. that. Just make it the rated version. No, it's got to be the unrated. You have to see the full spec, full spectrum. You have to know how awful this can be. Like this movie shows like the true how bad it can really get. You know what I mean? Like this is obviously worst case scenarios for all four of our people in this film. I'd say this but is man, an it's average bad. scenario. <laughs> yeah, average scenarios. Yeah, it's, this is the heroin scenarios. Well, I mean with the opioid epidemic yeah, rising, true, yeah. could, this could be the norm. Yeah, it could have been the norm. Yeah, you know, like I'm the heroin addict, so I don't know. But uh, yeah, a very, very difficult movie to watch, especially if like you're someone that has like had addiction issues like I've had in the past and it made it really hard or if you know someone like closely that's had addiction problems, like makes it really difficult to watch this movie. But it is definitely worth your time, especially from a technical standpoint. It's it's absolutely fantastic. Like Matthew Liboutique, who does the cinematography, is does a phenomenal job. Clint Mansell's score is one of the most iconic scores of all time. And like Aronofsky's direction for a second movie is incredible. All the performances are, are top notch. Like it's amazing. No, you know it's your favorite movie. Not anymore. I just changed it to <laughs> All About Eve. No, all About Eve. <laughs> all About Eve. Requiem for All About Eve. <laughs> Omega Level is proudly sponsored by Ink or Die Studios, a unique combination of a tattoo parlor and hair salon. Located at 270 North Dakota Street by Flanagan's, Ink or Die Studios employs the best artists and stylists around. Boasting a friendly atmosphere, helpful, talented, and incredibly creative staff, Ink or Die Studios is the only tattoo shop and hair salon you'll ever need. Stop in, call, or contact them through their social media accounts today to set up an appointment. Make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe and hit that notification bell. Like, I'm pretty sure Jeff's already done all four of them. I don't know why we keep telling them this. We just gotta make sure. Unsubscribe and resubscribe. <laughs> yeah, just keep doing it. Unsub, resub, just so I keep getting the notification updates. But uh, make sure that you go back and watch our comic talk from this week. Make sure you're squ- subscribed to the channel and comment on comic talk what your favorite Marvel MCU movie is so that you're entered in the giveaway for a chance to win the $100 gift certificate from Lalo Jones at Inkerdise Studios. Next week in comic talk, we're going to announce the winner, so make sure you're doing that. Let us know in the comments down below if you've seen Requiem for a Dream. Did you like it? Did this make you want to watch it? Uh, any other movies you think you'd like to see us talk about in the future? Let us know. Can we scrape lower? Yeah, can is the, here's the bottom of the barrel. Can we get even deeper? Thanks for watching, We're though. trying to get to, like, E.T. levels of movie right now. Yeah, yeah. The game, not the movie. No, the game. Yeah, totally the game. Thank you, viewer. We'll see you next week.